What's up people, Jade up here with my 2012 WWE Royal Rumble review video. Gonna go ahead and jump right into things. The first match of the night was a triple threat steel cage match. Daniel Bryan successfully defends his World Heavyweight Championship versus Mark Henry in the Big Show. This match was okay. Nothing really jumped out at me about this match until it started to get closer to the ending. You had Danny Bryan hit Big Show with the Tornado DDT, then he applied the LaBelle Lock, which is broken up by Mark Henry, then Mark Henry ends up getting hit by the Knockout Punch. I liked all of that. All of that was pretty cool. I felt like at that point, the match was just getting started because before then, they were kind of just going through the motions and there was nothing that really got me excited about it. You know, so then we go on and Danny Bryan, he climbs up to the top of the cage and he's like actually on the other side, but Big Show, well, I think Big Show like put his hands around his neck and pulled him back up to the top of the damn cage Danny Bryan goes right back over then he's like literally dangling off the side of the cage a big show is just holding on with his arm but the grip ends up loosening Danny Bryan drops down to the ground I actually like the ending of the match but overall I would say that it was um underwhelming second match of the night was an eight diva tag team match you had the Bella twins uh Natalia Divas champion Beth Phoenix defeating Kelly Kelly, Eve, Alicia Fox, and Tamina. This was your typical Divas match. There was no effort, no excitement, no interest, no importance, nothing. It was just there. But I will say I did like Kelly Kelly's dive from the top rope onto the rest of the ladies to the outside of the ring. That was cool. Other than that, there's not much that I can say about this match except that it was like your quintessential Easy Max snack break. And that's about all I can say. Next up, we have John Cena versus Kane. This match ended in a double countout. It was a very physical match straight out of the gate, and they maintained that energy from beginning to end. It wasn't like your typical Cena match where he gets his ass kicked for like 90% of the match, and then he comes back for the win in the end. They really changed things up this time around, and it was a real back-and-forth contest. Uh, Cena and Kane, I think that they worked pretty nicely together. They matched up pretty well, and it all added up to an entertaining match for me. Nothing was really too thrilling about it, but still, pound for pound, it was, you know, a good match. When all was said and done, Kane was the one standing tall as they had brawled to the back. Kane ends up taking Zack Ryder in a wheelchair, rolling him down to the ring, hitting him with the tombstone. He laid him out. Then John Cena comes back down to the ring. He choke slams him, so Kane was the one standing tall. That's not exactly how I saw things going, but it does open up more interesting questions as to what's going to happen next in this whole Embrace the Hate saga. For the most part, I have been enjoying it key in their most part because there have been some cheesy ass moments in this little feud between John Cena and Kane and I would say that Zack Ryder at the Royal Rumble in a back brace and while he's in that back brace in a damn wheelchair also that goes right on the list of cheesy ass moments but like I said overall I have been enjoying it and I'm also really liking this evolution of John Cena's character and you know I can't wait to see where they go in the next step in this feud between John Cena and Kane. The next match was Brodus Clay versus Drew McIntyre. Drew got no effective offense in whatsoever in what was about a 65 second long match. The Funkasaurus literally squashed him, pinned him, and the match was over just like that. Um, the match, it was a joke, and I didn't feel as if it was really necessary for a pay-per-view, but I do remember myself asking the question, how lower could WWE, like, bury Drew McIntyre after he's already jobbed to the Cobra. Like, I'm thinking, what the fuck can be worse than this? And apparently, that question was answered at the Royal Rumble. The WWE Championship match was up next. CM Punk defending versus Dolph Ziggler with John Laurinaitis as a special guest referee. Anytime Punk and Ziggler get into the ring together, they always deliver quality matches. I didn't expect anything less from them at this Royal Rumble pay-per-view, and they delivered. They did not disappoint at all. Both guys did a great job when it came to the near falls and the counters. That one counter where Ziggler was up in the GTS position, and he countered that into a fame master. That was great. That looked awesome. 
Then, of course, we have the extra antics with Laurinaitis as a special guest referee, but he made sure he got into that damn ring and made that count when it was oh so obvious that CM Punk was going to be declared the winner of the match after he had hit Dolph Ziggler with the GTS. So he makes a pin. CM Punk retains his WWE Championship. All of the stuff going on with John Laurinaitis in this match and the other referee they actually had out there who was in the ring while John Laurinaitis st stood on the outside, that actually caused me to downgrade the match a little bit because it took away from what was actually going on in the ring but even with that downgrade because of all of the crazy antics it still comes out positively on the other side so overall i would say that this was a pretty good match great performance by Dolph Ziggler and CM Punk and this was up until this point you know the best match of the night Finally, we move on to the main event, the Royal Rumble match itself. There were a lot of pretty cool moments in this Rumble. I personally liked, and I see a lot of people complaining about this, but I did personally like how they worked in all of the announcers into the match. You had Booker T in there, Jerry the King Lawler. They even worked in a spot from Michael Cole. I think he came in as a number 20 entrant, and then the number 21 entrant was Karma returning after months off from WWE. She jumps into the ring. Michael Cole is fucking terrified. She ends up clotheslining him. He's so scared, he jumps over the damn ropes himself. He lands on the ring apron, but his commentary partners, who had gotten eliminated at that point from the match, they actually get up and pull him off of the damn apron and end up eliminating him from the match. So, of course, he was bitching and complaining about that when he went to go sit back down at the commentary table. But, um... Yeah, I also liked how we had The Miz and Cody Rhodes working together through a big portion of the match. They're two of my favorite guys in WWE, so to see them form that little partnership there on the spot, that was pretty cool, them eliminating a lot of people. And both of them actually have pretty big honors for the Royal Rumble. You can check out PWFEmpire.com to find out more about that. I got a link down in the uh, description box, so make sure you guys check that out. But, um... Yeah, Miz and Cody Rhodes, they look pretty good throughout this match. They had great performances, even though they didn't end up winning. But um, what else happened in this uh, match? Oh, how can I forget this? How can I forget this? Kofi friggin' Kingston walking on his damn hands outside of the ring. You know, the rule of the Royal Rumble is the way you are eliminated from the match, if you're thrown over the top rope and both of your feet hit the ground. So this dude is like, you know what? You know, The Miz, he pushes Kofi out of the ring, and he's like, you know what? I'm about to start walking on my fucking hands. So he does a handstand, walks on his hands over to the steel steps. He props his feet up there. He gets up on the steel steps and walks right back into the ring like a fucking G. That was absolutely amazing. I love that moment. That was, like, probably my favorite moment out of the Rumble. I went nuts for that. If you guys did not see it, you definitely need to see that. I'm not saying, hey, go buy the pay-per-view, spend $50 just to see Kofi Kingston walk on his fucking hands. But, you know, I'm pretty sure y'all out there know how to see it if you wanted to. So, yeah. Uh, we ain't even going to say anything about that. We're just going to keep it moving. Um, So, we get a couple more people into the Rumble. Um, The number 30 entrant was the big show. He came in and he cleaned house. I think it was like less than 60 seconds. He ended up eliminating four people. Hell, he eliminated one person before he even got into the damn ring Just and then just completely like knocked Jack Swagger out. So he gets into the ring and he starts cleaning house, but he ends up getting eliminated himself by Randy Orton. Randy Orton gets eliminated by Chris Jericho and the final two competitors in the Royal Rumble were Chris Jericho and Sheamus. They have like a pretty cool one-on-one -on -one contest between the two. It was very entertaining and then Chris Jericho ends up being eliminated by Sheamus and Sheamus is declared the 2012 Royal Rumble winner. I personally picked Wade Barrett to win the Royal Rumble but Sheamus was my second choice. Um, after all, hell, he, is, he was number one on my fave five but the thing is that Fave 5 video was made a couple of months ago, and since then, Sheamus has kind of lost his way in WWE. He hasn't been in a meaningful feud in a while, and it's not necessarily to say that he fell off track because they gave him this amazing build. Like, they pushed this dude like it was nearly flawless, but then they kind of like pressed pause on him. Like I said, he wasn't in any kind of meaningful feud, so he kind of went off track a little bit, but... Hell, he just won the Royal Rumble, so he's back on track now, and that track leads right to WrestleMania 28. 
Overall, I did enjoy the Rumble match, and I am satisfied with the winner. Now, I know there are a lot of people out there who are pissed off that it wasn't Chris Jericho, but if I'm being honest, I didn't want him to win anyway, so I'm good with that. Uh, as far as the show as a whole goes, there were a few matches on the card that could have very easily been on Raw or SmackDown, so those were a waste. Um, Cena versus Kane, that was good. Punk versus Ziggler, that was pretty good. Then you had a fun and enjoyable Rumble match. Overall, this was a, um, like... Kind of like a middle of the road show. I would give it somewhere in in the range of like a, a, a C, C minus, C plus. So let, let's just go with a C. Let's round it out. Give it a C. Um, there was nothing that really blew me away about this show, and I will admit to having like heightened expectations because hell, this is the beginning of the road to WrestleMania. Like I was looking for something huge to happen, something big that would leave people talking, and I don't feel like that we had that moment at the. Where you rumble, but with all of that being said, I would still say, without a shadow of a doubt, that this was the best pay per view of the year. Now, I'm, I know some of y'all are looking at me like, J Dub, you almost made it through the whole video without telling that horrible ass joke. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard that like a million times already, but you know, there you go. A million and one. So, um, thank you for uh, checking out the video. Make sure you head over to pwfempire.com if you want some like in depth results. For the pay-per-view, we have a lot of write-ups over there, in-depth results for every single match on the show. We also have some stats for the Royal Rumble, all of that good stuff, and we'll have more news updates as time rolls along. So thank you guys for watching this video. I am J-Dub. Peace out.